Hi, and welcome to Roswell United Methodist Church. My name is Michael Cromwell, and I have the joy of serving as one of the associate pastors here at RUMC. Thanks for joining us for our on-demand version of the sermon, which will be delivered later today. If you'd like to watch our services live, you can do so via our live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15. Notice our different worship times and our different hours that we have now. You'll also be able to see the entire worship service service on demand later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. We are so glad that you are with us today. We're thankful for your presence and we're thankful for your generosity and the different ways that you are helping to make RUMC a place of community and faith. Let's have a word of prayer before we hear our sermon. Gracious and loving God, we love you so much and we are grateful for this day and this day that we have to worship you. May the words that we are to hear, may they not only pierce our ears, but pierce our hearts as well, that we might be changed in different people because of what you have to say to us today. We thank you and we love you all in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now let's hear our sermon from today. Greetings. My name is Jeff Ross. I'm one of the associate pastors here at the Roswell United Methodist Church. I'd like us to turn to 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 through 17. And this is Paul's letter conversation with Timothy. And he says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who has given me strength, that he considered me trustworthy appointing me to his service. And even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of who I am the worst. But for that very reason I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Now to the King eternal, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Wonderful, gracious God, we give you thanks for this day, for your word, uh, for the opportunity to dive into it a little bit, to look at our, ourselves in the scripture, Paul, uh, and, uh, and see what you would have to say to us today. For it's in Christ's name that we pray. Amen. Well, it's good to have the chance to, to share with you today. Uh, I want to look at this uh, testimony uh, of Paul. <laughs> he says he was the worst of sinners. Uh, and that could be a lively debate. We could put a lot of people on the stage and, uh, and debate who is the worst sinner, but Paul claims that title here, so for a, a few moments we'll, we'll give it to him. But I also want to uh, invite you as you're at home uh, to pull up the words to the song Amazing Grace. Uh, the song that John Newton wrote, and, um, and look at the words of that song, because Newton uh, also claims to be one of the highest rated sinners. Uh, and the song, Amazing Grace, uh, gives his testimony of sorts of what God did in his life. You know, everybody has a story. Everybody has a story, especially folks in the church have a story of Here's where I was, here's what I did, here's what I thought, here's how I acted, and then this is what happened to me. This is how I encountered the living God, and this is what happened. And we all have a chance to weigh in uh, with the song Amazing Grace and say, yeah, that, that, that could have been my song, uh, or, or read this scripture from Paul and say, well, I don't know, Paul, you, you did some bad things, but, but maybe my life challenges that title of uh, the, the, the most accomplished uh, sinner. 
And so, uh, amazing grace, John Newton is telling his story. First Timothy here, uh, Paul is telling his story. Uh, Newton's story in the, the song Amazing Grace begins, I once was lost. That's pretty succinct. That, uh, that, that gives us an image I think that many of us can relate to. Paul says it a little differently in what we just read. He says, even though I was once a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a violent man. That sounds pretty lost too, uh, going down the wrong path. It'd be uh, interesting maybe at another time to dive into why he was so zealous about uh, this path of life. Well, I wonder how you, how you would start your story. Uh, if it would be a short phrase like, I once was lost, or if it would be a longer sentence listing out the things that, that you have done. Um, I wonder what it would be like if when we all came to church, uh, we had to wear a t-shirt that says, I, I once was, and then fill in the blank. Um, I wonder if that would help or not, or uh, confuse folks, or be distracting. Uh, but we all have a past, we all have a history, we all have a story. Newton says, I once was lost. Um, and so, partly what he means by that is that John Newton was a slave trader. Uh, in the 1700s, he had a, a ship that would go to Africa, load up uh, slaves, bring them back to England, and he was part of that human trafficking uh, time frame uh, where many people died. People died in the roundup, people died on the boats, people died uh, uh, in the, the transportation. Um, God began to work on John Newton. He began to see and hear and have nightmares about what he had done and what he'd caused. Newton says, I was lost. And that's part of his testimony. As we share our stories, we don't do it to glorify sin, but we do need to talk about it. We do need to be real. We do need to give voice to the things in life that we do that, that we should not do. So what's your story? Would, on your t-shirt, would you have, I once was a liar, a sneak, I once was mean, I once was an adulterer. I once was angry. I once was a thief. I once was an alcoholic. I once was on drugs. I once was into pornography. I once was a workaholic or jealous or selfish. I wonder if on that list you hear your story, if that's an ongoing story or a past tense story, and, and how have you seen God at work in your life? This is where both Paul and John Newton start. They, they start by saying, this is what I, I was. I once was lost. If your experience is like most folks, it's probably I once was lost, and then I got lost again, and then I got lost again. Uh, we're always in need of redemption, and it's not a one-time thing, uh, but it's something we begin to see about ourselves as we grow in love and grace uh, and experience the mercy of Jesus Christ. Paul said, I was a blasphemer. I was a persecutor. I was a violent man. John Newton just said, I was lost. But you know, this, the song continues, and it says, Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. In 1 Timothy chapter 13 and 14, Paul says it this way, I was shown mercy. The grace of God was poured out upon me. It was poured out abundantly. Uh, Paul has the thing about this grace of God. Uh, he didn't feel like he deserves it. He didn't feel like he earned it. It was just a gift, and he's amazed at the gift. Newton says, once I was lost, once I was one time or even maybe a couple of times, but my lostness was not permanent, which is good news. Do you hear that? It's a, it's a whisper of hope. I once was lost, 
but now I'm found. Paul found hope in mercy. Now let's look at how this mercy was delivered. This is important, uh, maybe more important than anything you hear today, how this mercy was delivered. I thought I would illustrate it because Paul uses a key word. He says that uh, mercy and grace were poured. And I love that image because uh, mercy and grace wasn't placed. It, it wasn't surgically inserted. Uh, it wasn't something that was done on a specific spot in that spot only. But he says mercy and grace was poured. Think about that image for a second. What, what does pouring look like as opposed to something precise? If you were going to draw a circle with a magic marker uh, around something, that, that would be pretty precise. But pouring uh, can, can get to what you're trying to pour the grace and mercy on, but it also can get everywhere else. So take a look at this. When I pour, I, I hope you can see this, but it... It gets everywhere. Pouring is messy, and that's the point. Pouring is messy. It gets on everything. It gets on things that maybe wasn't intended to. It's a side effect. Pouring starts off in one place, uh, but then spreads to other places. It gets you on you. You can't get it off. Uh, it's, a, it's a messy thing. It's an abundant thing. Pouring is not just a little bit. Pouring is a lot. Uh, mercy and grace are given freely and abundantly. And I think that's Paul's choice of words here, uh, that mercy and grace are poured. It's not like God only has a, a few grains of grace and mercy and he has to give it out sparingly. Uh, that's not it at all. God's grace and God's mercy uh, is abundant. There's no short supply. There's no danger of God running out of that mercy and grace. Poured is all over the place. It's, it's liable to spatter up on somebody else, and maybe they get a little grace and mercy on them as well. But it's abundant. It's a lot. It overflows. It's over the top. Newton says, I was blind. But now I see. I was lost, but now I'm found. Paul says grace and mercy were poured, which is generous and lavish, uneconomical, exaggerated, excessive, exuberant, plentiful, unrestrained. That's what grace is. And that's why they're singing in this song, and that's why they're celebrating, and that's why they're so amazed at the grace of God. Newton doesn't just uh, hope that his message gets through on one point, uh, but he drives it home, uses a different image and illustration. He says, I once was blind. I once was blind. I once was lost, and I once was blind. Paul says it this way in 1 Timothy chapter 1, 15 and 16, I was the worst of sinners. Again, there's that contest again. Uh, was Paul the worst, or has somebody else been the worst? I'm not sure that I would want that title. Newton says, uh, I was blind. Now, I wear glasses, I have contacts in right now, uh, because I have, I have trouble seeing. I, I would wear them all the time, the glasses, except I had LASIK surgery a few years ago, so now I just need a little low-power contact to be able to see. I had a, a thing called an astigmatism, or still do, uh, that makes things a little blurry. Uh, it wasn't that the world out there was blurry, it's that my vision or my understanding and how my brain processed it was blurry. God created it all good, but we distort it by the things we say and do, the ways we act. We take what is good and we make it into something bad. That, that's what we do. We have experiences in the world that twist reality. And, and that's why we see so many chaotic, dreadful, 
hurtful things uh, across our world, from war to racism, human trafficking. The list is, is endless of, of things that we do to ourselves, to each other, uh, because we, we see the world in a distorted way. We, we see it for what we can gain out of it, irregardless of what that does to other people. Uh, and we make bad decisions because we see the world in this distorted way. We don't need to get into an argument about who is the worst sinner. Uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 23 says, We have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the mark. It doesn't really make a difference, the, impact, the extent of our sin, for we're all there. I don't know if you're sitting with a couple of folks today, but, but look around the table, look around the room. Uh, one thing we have in common is we're all sinners, all of us, everybody that you're sitting with, everybody that uh, is there with you right now, we're, we're all sinners. We're all blind to some degree, and that blindness is rampant. Paul says, I was the worst sinner. John Newton simply says, I was blind. You know, but the song, the song goes on. I once was lost, but now I see. I once, was, uh, or, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. Paul says in verse 16, I was shown mercy. Mercy is not getting mercy what we deserve. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. I, I just don't know how the church has gotten into the place that it is today. Uh, we were lost and now we're found. We're blind, but now we're see. We sounds, sounds like a lot of good news to me. It sounds like joy to me. It sounds like hope. It sounds like something uh, to celebrate. And I don't get how we can take something so great, so wonderful and amazing as this grace is, and try to turn it into so many rules that exclude people and make people feel less than. And I, 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 I had that uh, idea just impressed into me one evening uh, at my house. We live uh, in Dahlonega on kind of a side of a little hill, and uh, there's some uh, open trees and areas around us. And so at night, we noticed some deer were coming through, and we decided it would be fun to, well, not we, my wife, uh, Sherry, decided it'd be fun to uh, put some food out for the deer. Uh, and so after doing that for a number of days, the deer were pretty predictable. They knew what time Sherry put the corn out, and uh, so they would, they would come. Uh, originally, it was just a few brave deer, one or two, but then they invited their friends uh, to come along as well. And so we began to get to know the deer. We could tell, by the way, that some of them looked, some of their markings, that they were coming back all the time. Uh, and uh, so we, we kept putting the corn out and kept watching, and they would eat the corn. And uh, then as they sort of walked away, you, you kind of looked like they nodded their head or maybe uh, uh, stuck a, a leg up to wave. Maybe not really, but we like to think so, uh, thanking us for putting the corn out. Well, it wasn't too long uh, before we were sitting out one night, and there was a regular group of four or five deer that were coming by, uh, and then all of a sudden that four or five was joined by another group of four or five, and we said, wow, they're really starting to invite all their friends. My thought, my ignorance here with deer was that all the deer in the world were of the same family. Uh, they were friends. They knew each other. They were all deer. They were all the same. I didn't know that deer were in little family groups and that those little family groups didn't always get along so well. And so as the, the corn was out and the one deer family evidently was eating the, the corn, 
another deer family came up and uh, were sniffing the corn and trying to get their head in the little bowl uh, to uh, get some corn. And the original family uh, members started uh, uh, snorting and, and standing up and sort of trying to whack the other deers uh, with their front legs. And I was aghast. I, I, was, I was like, hey, wait a second, there's enough corn. Y'all don't have to fight. In fact, it's not your corn. It's my corn. It's our corn. We gave the corn. You don't get to pick and choose who eats the corn. You can't stop somebody else from having the corn. That's not your job. So Newton says, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I once was blind, but now I see. And so grace is that way. Paul says it's poured out. It's abundant. Uh, there's no shortage of it like the deer thought. Uh, there's no shortage of it. We don't have to fight each other for it. We don't have to call each other names. We don't have to put each other in different camps and say, I'm better than you or your sin is worse than mine or any of that garbage. We simply come to the table and receive this grace of God. It's an amazing gift. It's amazing grace. And it's for every single one of us in the same proportions. This recording is made the week of um, World Communion Sunday. So that's coming up this Sunday. I don't know when you might be watching it. But the context around this is World Communion Sunday, where everyone in the world, uh, the Christian church around the world, celebrates communion. And communion is celebrating God's gift of grace and love, that Jesus was willing to take on the cross for you and me. It's a, it's a gift um, that we don't control the narrative of. We don't. No matter how much we think we should or could or would or would like to, we don't control the narrative of that. God does. It's God's grace. It's the, the work of Jesus Christ on the cross. We didn't hang on the cross for anybody. and We don't get to set the rules. It's God's grace. And we celebrate that grace today. I hope that you will receive it. I hope that you'll find that grace is messy Sometimes it gets on folks that maybe we wouldn't have picked to receive that grace. I'm not sure if you lived in Paul's day, you would have picked Paul. I'm not sure if you'd have lived in John Newton's day, you would have picked John Newton to receive grace. Mercy is not getting what we deserve. Grace is getting what we don't deserve. And we're saved by grace. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. Wonderful, gracious God, we love you. We thank you for the opportunity to, to receive your grace. Forgive us, God, when uh, we put boundaries on that grace, when we begin to set rules about that grace, when we begin to claim that grace is this and grace is that. It's not our job. Our job is simply to receive it and to celebrate it, to tell our story. And then as all the stories around the world come in, we see how amazing, God, you really are. That you reach out to folks of all kinds, of all places, of all colors, of all backgrounds, of all persuasions. Because your grace really is that amazing. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Thanks again for joining us today. Um, just a reminder, if you'd like to watch the entire worship service, you can do so via live stream at 9 o'clock and 11.15 a.m. You can also view the service on demand a little bit later this afternoon at rumc.com slash sermons. Also, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to hear about those. You can send those in to pray at rumc.com. Also, if you'd like to give of your tithes and your offerings, you can do that online as well. And that's at rumc.com slash giving. 
Uh, thanks again for joining us today and for honoring God with your presence. We hope and pray that you have a wonderful week and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Hi, thank you for joining us. My name's Tom Davis. I'm senior pastor here at Roswell United Methodist Church. Our mission here at RUMC is to help people live a Christ-centered life. We're a welcoming church, we're a biblical church, and we're a compassionate church. That the, we believe that the way that, that God made us, that he made us in his image. And what the Bible tells us is that his image is an us, is an our. When God said in the creation story, let us create humans in our image, he made us to be in community together. He made us to connect to him and one another. That's the place that this is at Roswell United Methodist Church, a place of community and faith. I want to invite you to join us. It might be online, it might be through social media, or it might be here in person. We meet at 9 o'clock in a contemporary service with a band. We also have two 1115 services. One is here in the sanctuary with a traditional choir and organ. We also meet at 1115 with a band in our chapel. Thank you for joining us, and I look forward to meeting you.